Deep learning may be a buzzword, but that doesn't mean it isn't an effective tool. Even now, deep learning is being used to rediscover the past. I'm speaking with Iris Kramer, an archaeologist and PhD student in computer science at the University of Southampton in the United Kingdom. Iris, can you tell me about your background with archaeology and deep learning? Yes, um, so I started my degree in archaeology. So I have a bachelor and master's in archaeology and a master was specifically in archaeological computing. Um, and my interest in deep learning came at the end of my, my master's really when I did my dissertation um, about automated detection of um, archaeology on remote sensing data. Um, and I found that the way that it's been done before could probably be improved with the use of deep learning because I saw deep learning emerging and if self-driving cars would be on the road then why couldn't we maybe do this with archaeology. Um, so yeah, this interest really led me to find a PhD um, where uh, I could do this. So yeah, basically the year between doing my master and PhD, I learned how to code and really yeah, get myself to a, a relatively comfortable level with, with starting a PhD in this. How useful has deep learning been? Um, well, so the difference from making a rule-based approach in my uh, basic computer vision rule-based approach in my uh, master's dissertation towards now doing this with machine learning is, is, is really significant. So we, can, we, can, we have uh, new detections of possible sites, um, but also we can now, rather than just searching for one object and making a whole rule-based approach for this one object, we can now easily switch to a new object that we want to detect, a new type of site that we're interested in. So on that level, it has already yeah, worked very well to be rigid enough to apply this to different things. So what exactly is deep learning? How do you define it? So I would see it as um, the subfield of machine learning that finally enables fields like archaeology to be able to make use of machine learning in a really profound way. Um, like archaeology, also medical imagery is maybe the most known example where previously the data is too noisy, it's too, they have too small data sets, and that's the same for archaeology. Um, where previously researchers have said, well, I've tried, but it's really not, uh, it's really not for archaeology. And I think with deep learning and the abilities that we see now that it works quite well on small data sets, yeah, and noisy data sets, that, that this is the real uh, step change for us. Iris, do you think deep learning is going to enhance archaeological research? Yes, definitely. I think um, it will be integrated as like a tool for desk-based assessment. If they're interested in certain objects, if there is enough of those sites, then uh, this will just be another, another way to find new sites. So that's, and that is just for remote sensed data. So that will be for them. But also in other, there are other fields within the archeology span that we can use this as an integrated tool, I think, together with other approaches. So yeah, I think this is, going to make a good, a good change for, for archaeology. As an archaeologist, how have you been using deep learning? Um, so I have different uh, remote sensing data sets. So I have satellite images and LiDAR data. LiDAR data is uh, um, airborne laser scanning. Um, and so we, which creates an elevation uh, model, digital terrain model, and sees sort of through the forest. So we use bo both these data sets. Um, and we have all the site, known site locations, the archaeological site locations. So what I then do is I train on the known site locations and validate on another area to see if it works there as well. And then we, we try a new area to see if there is any uh, sites that we could maybe possibly uh, detect. So yeah, the training, the training bit that's then that I apply, I try using different network, neural networks in my research and uh, so that's mostly what my research is about, but the basic steps are uh, the same. I've tried on different remote sensing data sets and uh, yeah. Have you found anything new? Yeah, well, that's, that's still early to um, elaborate on too much because it's my second year of my PhD. And, um, but I know also from my colleagues already in other countries where they're also, it's really early in the research, uh, but we do find new, we definitely do find new sites. 
and at a bigger scale than we imagined. So we are actually sometimes a little bit in discussion with the local heritage management bodies because if we have so many new sites, how are we gonna how are we gonna actually verify these and what are you gonna do when you have so many more sites than you previously thought? Because there is obviously a lot of archaeological sites that have not been discovered yet and with techniques like these it almost yeah it becomes way more interesting yeah to find them at, at quick uh, quick pace do you see a use for deep learning in any other academic fields yes definitely um such as um in his uh, in history uh if i'm thinking about my own approach with images they have um paleography where they try to um uh find scripts of, uh, or did they uh, transcribe scripts? Um, uh, and yeah, they can use it on, on that. There are some projects already on that that I know of. So they, they definitely apply this already um, and have different competitions as well, trying to do so. Um, and then in anthropology, yes, there's also text mining that they can go through to see, we do that in archeology span as well. There are some projects to go through databases of like different, if there is like, yeah, I can't really come up with <laughs> with an idea right now. But there, this 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 is, uh, yeah, people working on this already.